Oh, thank you for coming so quickly. Please come in. Our pleasure, madam. Chill, chill, yes. Well, the police said it sounded rather urgent, and as the school canteen had just closed, we couldn't have timed it better. The police? Then you're not the police. No, love. We're not the police. Not the real police, but we're just what you need. Well, who are you then? What are you doing here? Well, I'm PC I do, Vey. Call me Chief Inspector, and this is PC Coot. Call her PC Coot. But if you're not the police, what does PC stand for? Pretend, Constable. Pretend, Constable? Pretend Chief Inspector, do they? Ah, oh, my reputation precedes me. We are from Acting for Television Detection, Affidada. We are an educational establishment teaching actors how to perform in British TV crime-solving dramas. Well, that's ludicrous. Oh, thank you. Hold on. Why don't you call yourselves Detective Acting for Television? That scans better. Couldn't do that, sir. That would be daft. Now, if you don't mind, we need to ask you some questions. I'm not answering your questions. You're not the real police. You're not qualified. Well, perhaps not, but we'll soon get this matter resolved for you, madam. I say 40 to 80 minutes allowing for TB ads, or one hour two at the most, if we're picked up by the bee. I'd like to pick you up by the bee. I suggest you show us the crime scene. Oh, the theft was from here, was it? Yes. The Muckanese battle horn. Yes, how did you know? You told the police, sir, madam, and the police told us. But why did they tell you? I should have thought that was obvious, Jill. The Muckanese battle horn was a prop. It was fabricated in 1955 specifically for the Sellers Milligan Emery short film, The Case for Muckanese Battle Horn. It had no place in history before that. There was no Muckanese. There were no Muckanese people, and there were no horns blown either in battle or at half time. It was on loan from the Goon Appreciation Society. They'll be extremely peeved. Exactly. Exactly what? Exactly, Sir Dilly Jill. Look, you two, you've no authority here, no right to be here, and quite frankly, I'll be a monkey's uncle if you're able to help. Look, Jill, I think you should calm down and sit down. You're doing yourself a misservice. No, not again. It usually happens when I laugh or cough. Give me a minute and I'll freshen up. And don't touch anything. Welcome to your first case, PC Coot. Oh. <laughs> Look around, see what catches your eye. <gasps> this looks like a clue. In what way is a photograph of the goons wearing short trousers a clue? I'm not sure, but in a later moment during this case I might say, do you remember in the goons photo there was a man wearing short trousers and there was something strange about his knees? Well, which man? That chap there. But that's the Welsh Kenyan singer Harry Sikombi and there's nothing strange about his knees. That's a Labrador. No, Gov. About his knees, not about his knees. Around his knees? I mean his knees. Oh, well, then say so, Coop. That all is about and around nonsense. Yes, sir. In a, do you remember in the goon's photo there was a man wearing short trousers and something strange as knees? Oh, take a sketch, Coot, in case I need. Need. <laughs> Very good, sir. <laughs> Look, you two, whatever you do, don't make me laugh or cough. This morning's laundry isn't dry yet. And I've been thinking, you might as well try and help. Excellent. To the robbery then. What exactly was robberied? Look, we've already discussed this. Look, the case. Was the brick in there before the robbery? What do you think? What I think or what I do not think doesn't answer that question. No, the brick was not there before the robbery. Oh, so the brick was a type of calling card, a calling brick. <gasps> How much is a brick coat? To buy or rent, sir. What a rent, of course. Uh, three pence per day, returning after 9pm, incurs a further day's rental charge. Interesting. How so? Well, I'll call Privet and we have two and a half hours to hand this brick back, otherwise he'll be trapped inside a pocket. Can I remind you, they have the Macanese battle horn? Of course, yes. They're going to ransom the horn, that's how they get the money to pay them for the brick rental. Fiercely ingenious.
came as soon as I heard. Heard what? The news. It's on the news? It may have been on the weather as well, but as I said, I came as soon as I heard the news. And who are you? Rumerals. Norman Rumerals. You may have heard me land just now. Can't stay long. Colleagues on the apron. And you are? P.C. Coop. We're investigating the kidnapping of a Muckanese battle horn. I was at the hangar servicing the old kite. And then I went home. Must have been around 11pm. Nobody saw me. Did we ask? No, but you were going to. That's my job. Got to fly, literally. See you soon, Pip Pip. Who on Don't earth? Don't worry about Norman, Jill. We use him a lot. He runs a squadron of red herrings, you know. Bulks up the storyline, complicates things, ratchets up the tension coming up to the ad break. Did you notice that long glance he gave just before oh, he left? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's making out you're innocent in a guilty way, even when you actually are innocent, or guilty of something other than the thing that's being detected. It's quite a skill. Shouldn't it be a shoal of red herrings? Yes, it's on the Matapayak. No further questions. That's the spirit. So go. Back to the station for a debrief, or do you have anything else in mind? Something else, Coot. I think we need to see a non-specific gender person about a brick. Good thinking to come to Sky, sir. I'm sure Jerry won't get a whiff of official doom from this get up. Thank you, Q, and we can reveal ourselves when it suits us. Very liberating, sir, sir. It's shut. I spotted that too. I'll try knocking. My name is Jerry Quixote. I was out at the bingo. I had a line, but I missed the house by 12. And then after I got, got home around 11.15 after celebrating with a magazine down the Legion, lots of people saw me. Did we ask? No, but it's in my contract. What happened to your fourth wall? You just broke it. You're sweating, Jerry. You can call me Mr. Sweating, Jerry. Thank you. We will. So, Mr. Sweating Jerry, we're interested in renting a British Brown Standard Frog two nights. We rent for a minimum of three nights. Let me check. No, I have none of those in stock at present. Uh, may I interest you in the Gerard Depardieu? He is six nights for price of five. Sorry, Mr. Sweats, Reddish Brown, Standard Frog, two nights. I have one on short-term rental. It is due back day after tomorrow. Can you come back in a couple days? We have our man. We'd like to borrow your rental book, please. Minimum three nights. Oh, Mr. Brent, Outside the door, sir, you will see this is a rental shop. Yeah. Uh, what is your rate, my man? Five shillings and sixpence per night, or an old money, two piglets and a bushel of sweet peas. Minimum three nights. They must have had huge trouser pockets in the olden days, sir. Thank you. I shall need it back the day after tomorrow. Not a problem, Mr. Sweating Jerry. We'll be here. I bid you good afternoon. Oh, and I bid you good afternoon and good evening. Your bid, sir. That's your trick, PC Coop. to believe it's been three days since the Muckanese battle horn was abducted. A lot of advert time under the bridge, sir. Yes, and a coincidence, we all happen to be wearing the same clothes as you, are they? Sharp, sir, very sharp. Oh, second nature, Coot. Oh. Now, I've gathered you all here to provide a denouement for what I'm calling the second wind of the Muckanese battle horn to identify the villain. There's only two of us here, me and him, so it must be him. Unless it is you, Mademoiselle Jill. Silence you two. This denouement is for me to do new. I have discovered who the villain is by forensic analysis of Sweating Jerry's rental book. That same brick had only been rented out twice before. The 29th of April 1982, the 7th of December 1983. That second day, or the day after, is legendary down at the Avedo classroom. The day Shergar was stolen. Good Lord, 
I'm too young to remember, sir, so for my benefit and for general exposition purposes, perhaps a quick reminder on Shergar? Allow me. Shergar was a thoroughbred racehorse who won the 1981 Epsom Derby by a still record 10 lengths, only to be kidnapped two years later and never returned. The IRA were heavily implicated, but no ransom was ever paid, and the horse was never seen again. So what? Uh, so much, Mr. Jerry. If we find a brick was left in the stable on the night of the theft, this brick, then the same villain who stole Shergar stole your Muckinese battle horn, Jill. And what's more, she'll be walking in here in a moment or two. She? Maybe the face I can forget. A trace of pleasure or regret. Maybe my treasure or a price I have to pay. She! Oh, my goodness. What's your name and where are you from? Very good cub for remembering your quiz show host lessons, but we're acting for television detection. I figured out. So, horse and horn thief, we have you at last. Horse what? According to the Brick Rental Ledger Coop, this is Evelyn Words <laughs> with a U. I know how to spell words. PC Coot, did Evelyn Words her rights? Evelyn Words, you have the right to remain silent. But anything you do say will be heard, recorded, and later edited, regurgitated, and twisted by the prosecuting lawyer in a smug manner. Anything you do say is likely to provide an unexpected plot twist, which may prove to be your doing or undoing, so help me God. Close enough, Coop, close enough. Thank you, sir. So, I'm being arrested, am I? For what? You stole my Mackinese battle horn, apparently. You'll wear what, what? Not guilty. Then how do you explain this brick? The brick? How do I explain this brick? It's a bit metaphysical, isn't it? It's a brick. You explain it. I asked you first. This brick was used in the theft of the Muckinese Battle Horn not three days since. Sir, that was that brick. That is a different brick. Oh. Evelyn Worms, it seems though your brick has an alibi, but I'm keeping my eye on you. This is ridiculous. Whoever heard of an inanimate object needing an alibi? I agree, this is farcical. Hush, you two. Sit down. My governor here will decide how this plot twist and it's ten you was the tea. Uh, no? His knees. His knees. I didn't hear him. Gesundheit. How no, are you worry about this? His knees. Remember earlier when I said, do you remember in the goons photo there was a man wearing short trousers and something strange his knees? Oh, that, 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 that nonsense? Yes, sir. Take a look. Sweating Jerry's knees against the sketch I made of the goons in Jill's house. Up, Mr. Sweating Jerry. It's uncanny. They're one and the same. Two and the same. A pair of pairs, Lord Sir. Indeed. Four of a kind. Oh. There's no mistake in it, Sweating Jerry. Your knees are a direct match with the Welsh Kenyan singer Harry Sukombi, proving you are directly related and therefore incredibly likely of being guilty of perpetrating the crimes I have been solving for the last 13 or so minutes. It's Seacombe, not Sukombi, but carry on. Milligan Sellers and Seacombe the Goons. Milligan Sellers and Emery the case of the Muckinese Battle Horn. I put it to you that Seacombe was jealous of being excluded from the film and his descendants have attempted to gain retribution by kidnapping the major prop from Ict. Remember the new equal opportunities law, sir. I think we should check the other knees. Good point, Coot. Jill, Evelyn, prepare your knees for inspection. Heavens, these knees clearly show she's also a Seacombe. You're in the clear, Miss Words. It's a Seacombe family job, sir. Unless... Unless... Unless Evelyn Words and her knees are closely related to the fourth goon. Famine! Goon, not horseman of the apocalypse. But well done for having a go. I refer, of course, to Michael Benteen. Check Miss Word's knees again, Coot, with Benteens. 
heavens, sir. You're right. A doppelgang pair of patellas beyond a doubt. Okay, you three are your now, and there's just time for you to come clean if you're sharpish. Right, oh, we're bound to rights. We, the grandchildren of Michael Ventine and Harry Seacon, stole the Muckinese battle horn. And sugar. What did you steal on that other date in December 1982? Well, nothing. We were planning on pilfering John Gilgood's best supporting actor Oscar for Arthur. Oh, Arthur who? What? You heard Arthur who? Scargill, Askey, Weasley, Miller, C. Clark, Shelby, Conan Doyle. <sighs> Come on, Arthur who? And, and, and what did he want with John Gilgood's Oscar? <sighs> it's Arthur Pendragon. The Oscar is needed for the Anglo-Saxons in their fight against tyranny. Huh? Ridiculous. <sighs> well, you started it. That's for another episode, Coot. So, there we have it. Battle horn case closed. We're left just requiring either a devastating twist or a cheeky ironic one-liner to close the case. One thing more. Why didn't you steal John Gilgold's Oscar? We break it. it. <laughs>